Welcome back to Master Room Gaming Studios. I'm Craig. And I'm Connor. And today we have another data sheet review for you guys. Today we're going, going over the Psychic Brain Boys, that is the Neurothrope and the Zone Thropes. Mm -hmm. Some favorites of mine, very classic. Well, at least the Zone Thropes are pretty classic. Very. Neurothrope's newer to us, but. Uh, In some ways he's classic if he's the Doom. Now. He's, a, he's a memory, a distant fragment yes. of what we used to love as the Doom of Malentai. Well put. If you guys don't know about the Doom of Malentai, Ask it in the comments and we will tell you the damage that that thing used to do there. Maybe we'll make a quick little video on it We'll sometime. tell you a story of a relic that once was True. a beast. But for today... But today we have the Neurothrope and the Zonethrope. Yeah. If you're looking forward to this and you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe for more. Comment down below what other units you'd like us to cover. And we do have a playlist if you want to check it out of all of the ones we have covered already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So on today's video, we will go over the standard um, overview. We have the model profiles of the Neurothrope and the Zonethropes. We will then cover some adaptive physiologies and stratagems. There's not a ton on the adaptive physiologies, but stratagems, there's some decent ones there. Mm -hmm. We will also touch a little bit on relics and whirler traits for the Neurothrope. One key one in there and some more funsies for the whirler traits. Finally, we will go over some tactics for each, whether they are operating separately or together. There's some synergy, obviously, with them. Oh, yeah. And in the end, we will come to a conclusion about what we think of the Brain Boys right now in the state of 9th edition. Okay. So, let's hop into it. We will look at the Neurothrope first. He is 95 points and one of our most solid HQs. Yeah. A slow 5-inch move, but that's okay. He can fly, he's a character, and he doesn't really need to get anywhere fast. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, uh, does that ever come into play? Weapon skill, you know, weapon skill can. That's true. He does headbutt. So he's weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength toughness 4, which is the same as regular zone throps. Mm -hmm. He has 5 wounds, so 2 more wounds than a normal zone throw. Correct. 1 attack, because he, we call it the headbutt. We call it the headbutt. It's actually called claws and teeth, but we call it the headbutt because head. it's funnier. Yeah. Uh, leadership 9 with a 5-up armor save. I actually didn't even know they had a 5-up armor save. Technically, there are a few ways in 40k to negate yeah, invuln saves. There are. So, That's true. You know, you could hit with the 5-up. Yeah, and but really they have a 3-up a three three invuln up. save for the mighty warp field. For now. For now. We'll see. I hope it stays. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, some other abilities they have. Spirit Leech. So each time a Neurothrope slays a model with smite specifically has to be smite mm -hmm. you can heal a single wound on a friendly zone throw within six inches does that include him it does include him he can heal himself or another zone throw correct okay ah uh, cool you know it doesn't come up as much as you'd think it would what healing yourself he well healing anything really oh I, healing himself comes up more than healing zone throws. i mm. find that my zone throws are often either on full wounds or dead to, that makes sense. And, I mean, maybe, but he's often also not casting Smite. I don't know. It just, it sounds really good, and it is good, but it just doesn't come up. Doesn't happen a ton, yeah. yeah. Warp Siphon, though, that one comes up every game. You can reroll rolls of one when taking Psychic Tests for friendly zone throat units within six inches. He is a zone throat, so also himself. Massive deal. Very good. One of your best ways to buff your psychic. And there's the only, codex. and it's only a 1 in 36 chance you perils with him or zone throws then. Mm. Wow, true. You can still perils, yeah. but, you know. It's very rare. Very rare. And uh, we'll go over its psychic, its psyker levels, basically. He yep. can manifest two psychic powers in each of your psychic phases, and he can deny one psychic, psychic power in your enemy's psychic phase. Yep. They come with smite, and you can add one more power. Correct. But there are ways to add a third, I believe, right? Yeah, we'll there's some it. ways to get a third one out there. Yeah. It's a little tricky, but yeah, he is just two, two powers, one of them being hive mind discipline and one being smite. Cool. Next, we have the zoanthropes, a very similar stat line. Oh, very similar. Basically identical, except these guys only have two wound, or three wounds instead of five. Yeah. They're Otherwise, a, it is the same. They're a psychic unit. They have the three-up warp field. Mm -hmm. Their key thing is warp blast, obviously. 
and that is when they cast Smite, they have 24 inch range instead of 18. Scary. In addition, theirs does more damage. D3 mortal wounds if they're standard three unit. Mm -hmm. If there are four to five, it is two D3 mortal wounds. And if there are six of them, it's D3 plus three. Which is I, the main reason you it's think they're so good. It's a lot. Yeah. Now, if you super smite, then it is D6 plus three or D6 plus D3 or yeah, D6. And we, I'm sure we've mentioned this before on the channel, but imagine using that, getting that super smite against a knight. A which, knight, which you have. I have done it recently. Getting against blade guard veterans, things with high invuln saves. Yeah. Oh, it's so good, so good. There is some, you know, psychic denying is popping up more and more, so it's yeah. unfortunate, but uh, that's okay. So uh, their powers, they can deny one, they can cast one. However, if there are four or more of them in the unit, they can cast two powers, mm. and they still know two powers, so they know smite mm. or warp blast and then they can pick one more gotcha. out of those. I personally like to go all in on Psychic mm. if I have a big unit. So you'll take Psychic Scream, which is Smite, yeah. essentially, and you'll have Smite. So lots of mortal wounds. Double Smite. Double Smite. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a lot of text there, but it's, it's very straightforward. Like I just broke it down. Yeah. So we'll hop into Adaptive Physiologies and Stratagems. I'll say this first. You don't put adaptive physiology on these guys. I don't think I've ever seen you do it. There's no reason to. Yeah. But if you're being wacky and fun, Adrenal, Web, Adrenal Webs gives them a 2d6 inch consolidation. <laughs> so what? if they are in combat with something, and probably they won't kill anything, but someone else could kill something that they're in combat with, you can oh. 2d6 off into the distance. Huh. And maybe you use that to get onto an objective, get that to get yeah. closer to a key target you want to smite. I didn't even know that strategy existed. It's, it's, it's a cool one. Or physiology, sorry. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Huh. It, yeah, it's just, do you want that or would you rather have more durability or damage output? On your big, yeah. Yeah. Second one? Yeah, the second one, um, this one has a little bit more niche to it and it is the abhorrent pheromones, which is subtract two from enemy leaderships when they're within an inch. Hmm. Now Zone Thropes and Shadow in the Warp already does some leadership yeah. negating. So if you're going up against someone like Grey Knights, True. or Thousand Suns, yeah. or Eldar, who have a lot of psychers, this might actually start playing into it. It also, I mean, subtracting one from leadership, now uh, you know, you're hurting the combat attrition test and things like that. True. Don't do it, but it's an option. But it's within one inch, so when you're in close in combat, combat. Yeah. So the, okay. I mean, it's not the worst thing to put zone no, in no. combat. No, it's not the worst. You just, they have to smite the thing they're in combat with. So if you put them in combat, yeah. you just, you have to go with the fact that you know what they're smiting next turn, pretty much. You don't get to pick, basically. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's two of them within combat, then maybe. Yeah, but that's, <clears throat> that could be fun. It could be fun. Yeah. Like I said, fun, not ideal or necessary. For sure. Uh, there are a lot of useful stratagems if you want to start off with them. Yeah, we've got synaptic channeling for one command point. It allows one psyker to know all the powers on the table. Yeah, wow. so all of the friendly powers, not yeah. opponent. So if you've got a ton of psychers, Whatever your, what is it called, the traits of the hive mind? Or? Yeah, the hive, uh, psychic discipline, the yeah. hive mind discipline. Hive mind discipline. So if you've got enough psychers, essentially it's one command point and they can cast any power that is on the table. Oh. So on your table. Oh, like yep. any power you already have on one of your guys. Mm -hmm. That's weird. It's it's weird. It's kind um, of an odd one, yeah. It it comes after once in a while. So let's say you don't have um, uh, Catalyst on something, but you need to move it. You know, you're not in range for Catalyst for mm. one model, but you're in range it with him, but you really need it on them. Mm. You can pay a command point and he can cast it over there instead. That's cool. Something you still can't cast the same power twice but it allows you to allocate it somewhere else in a niche situation. That's a fluffy one too, I it like is. that. It is really cool. Yeah. Psychic Fissure, again, niche. Failed psychic tests within 12 inches, uh, the enemy has to take D3 mortal wounds. It sounds good. I did leave out an important point and I will say this here. You have to use this at the start of the psychic phase. Hmm. So you don't know if they're ever gonna fail one. However, it is for every 
failed psychic test for that phase. Oh. So it's kind of swingy. So it has, I mean, it has some potential. It has some potential. If you yeah. can get them within range of a lot of your enemies, then, I mean, again, they're going to move out, but you're forcing them to move. And yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I guess, again, against Space Marines or Thousand Suns? Grey Knights. Thousand Suns. Oh, sorry. That's Eldar, awesome. yeah. Yep. Any of the Psychic Heavy, other Tyranids? Yeah. It's a, it's a funky one. 2 CP, I get it because when it does come into play, it could be really annoying and powerful. Yeah, it could. But uh, yeah, so that's that one. Chances are it doesn't, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, third one is Psychic Barrage for one command point. 3d3 three three Mortal Wounds. You said bomb. Oh, yeah, that's it's a right. Mortal Wound bomb. Actually, why don't you just explain it yeah. better? Yeah. So it, this is Psychic Barrage. This comes back to an old thing from past codexes, but you need three units of three Zonthropes. It's very strange to have. It is. You know, one to of pick those. one point, you pick a point, I think it's believed like 18 inches away or 12 inches away, and everything within three inches of that point yeah. takes 3d3 mortal wounds. It's so weird. It's like, a, it's like an old pie plate. Essentially, yeah. You played it like a long a time blast ago. template. Yeah. To, it, <laughs> now, the zone throws all three mm -hmm. units, they cannot cast any other psychic powers that turn. And wow. you don't have to roll to get this off. That's a nice thing. It just does it automatically happens. I, I just wanted to make sure that I, I was right. You do have to roll. So if it's a standard, just normal unit, four plus to do the 3D3 mortal wounds. Right. If they have 10 or more models, a three plus to do mortal wounds. Which against a big squad. Eh, I mean, 3D3 could is be good. Is it worth good. sacrificing all your psychic? You know, yeah. That whole thing. And if it is a character, it is a five plus to do the 3d3 so, now if you do get that five up on a character yeah you're most likely just nuking that thing off the table but how many points is it to take three squads of three three squads of three is 450 points so that's and as soon as you lose a single zone throw you can't, can't do, do it, it anymore it's not good uh, it is fun i've done it once when the codex first came out you did it a long time ago it wasn't on me no, it wasn't on you. Yeah. It was, I think it was on Calvin. Nice. Back when he played regularly. Someone with you us. guys will hopefully meet soon. Hopefully. I did use it, and I'll talk about the little strategy behind it to make it slightly more effective. It was like, I mean, I, and that was back in 8th edition when you could re roll, you could use a command point re roll to re roll the 3 plus, 4 plus, and 5 right. plus. Can't do it anymore, so it's not, it's even worse it's than even it was. Worse. But I did some like, 15 mortal wounds, which was pretty fun. I guess in um, Apocalypse, if you want to try to nuke some stuff, It'd you could fun. do it in Apocalypse. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a way to use it. And then the final <laughs> one, which is a, the one you'll probably out of all of these use the most. Yep. Power of the Hive Mind, a unit may cast one extra power. Extremely useful. Where you will see this the most is that you can on a zone throw up, so zone throw up's no two powers. Mm -hmm. And let's if you have four plus in the unit, then you can cast two. But if they fall below four, so they only have three or two, they can only have one power. Uh, but you can use this stratagem to now you can cast both your go powers. Back up to it. If you have smite and psychic scream, now you can get them both off. Hmm. I did this in the tournament to kill Gilliman. I was gonna lose the game. It was the it was a fight for, you know, like I think we're fighting for third place mm. in the GT. And he, he'd had me pretty good there. And I was like, you know what? I want to kill Gilliman. I'm going to try to kill Gilly. I spent that one command point to, uh, that worked? to nuke him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was fun. It's a moral victory. It's a moral victory. That's what you got to do when you're getting your butt handed to you by top tier codexes. Take you what go you for can. the moral victories. Yeah. And have fun with the game. Don't yeah. just pack up your models and leave. Yeah. So that's some adaptive physiologies and stratagems. There's only one that's really good. The rest of yeah. them are very niche, but there's something. They're fun. You go in the fun category. You don't, you don't really need them with the zone throws, no. though. So Neurothrope, he is an HQ. He's a character. He has a few extra goodies that he can benefit from. Mm -hmm. The biggest one that you should probably like auto-include yep. is the Resonance Barb. It's plus one to Psychic Test, and he can cast an extra and deny an extra. However, so, however... Serious. The Neurothrope only knows two powers. This does not allow him to learn a third power. True. But you can use that one command point stratagem to cast an extra power and then use that one command point stratagem 
to cast a to know a power that someone else oh. on the board does. So if you're absolutely oh, yeah. desperate, you can spend two command points to cast another power with him. Right. But usually you won't. You probably you won't it. unless it's like, you know, you gotta kill out one more model or something. You have to take another, yes. Yeah. Psychic screen but or something. Plus one to psychic test and you get a reroll ones is pretty dang good. Auto include, like you said. Yeah. Now we've got warlord traits you could put on them. It's funny. I don't think I've ever seen one as a warlord, but <laughs> if you wanted to, uh, this is a Jormungandr warlord trait. It's called Insidious Threat. Enemy units never gain bonuses to saving throws from cover from attacks made within three inches of this model. So it essentially, if you are within three inches of, of an enemy... Of the Neurothrope. If they're within three inches of your Neurothrope. No, no, no. It, so if your shooting attacks mm. are made from models that are within three inches of the Neurothrope... Oh, it protects... Yes. Okay, now I see. Yep. Then the models that are being shot cannot get cover saves. Okay. It's basically like gotcha. he can somehow see, pinpoint, pinpoint stuff, it, yeah. use his hive mind to pinpoint the enemy. Yeah. It, it's okay. Yeah, I wouldn't right. do it regularly, but if you've got, you know, hive guard, well, hive guard, ignore cover, exocrines or mm. tyrannofexes or something yeah. that the Neurothrope is probably already babysitting. True. You know, it, in a fun scenario, you could put that on them. And could then, be useful. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Second one is uh, Soul Hunger. It's a Kronos Warlord trait. Whenever a Psyker fails a Psychic test within 18 inches, they suffer D3 Mortal Wounds. So, again, if you want to, yeah. if you want to tailor your list, yeah. encourage it. Now you can pair this with Psychic Fissure. Yes. And that's cool. now, whenever a Psyker fails a test within 18 inches. Or at 12 inches, I believe. Is yeah. Psychic Fissure 12? 12 inches? Yeah. They take 2d3 mortal wounds. They could just straight up die. So you could do some mortal wound stacking. And if they perils on top of failing, that is 3d3 mortal wounds. So that's, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to base your strategy <laughs> around stacking mortal wounds against like a non Space Marine or Necrons, probably, because they have such high leadership. Well, but the I leadership mean, doesn't matter here. It's just failing the psychic test. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of old psychic tests. You're thinking test, of the old psychic test. So stuck in the past. If you're playing Grey Knights, maybe I'll do this against you yeah, one time for fun. We should try it sometime. If you're playing Grey Knights, you're playing Thousand Suns or another psychic heavy army. Yeah. For fun, you could do it. Three. Who, who knows? It might kill somebody. Potentially nine mortal wounds to a character if they perils. I mean, you could kill Drago if he failed. You could nuke Drago. Yeah, yeah. if he perils. It'd be fun. Yeah. Just something to point out there for you guys. More fun stuff. Um, nope, I have lost my, there we go. Next page. So some tactics for the Neurothrope. These ones are pretty straightforward. Yeah. He's probably the best HQ, one of the best HQ options. There's two things he can do. One, mm -hmm. babysit your zone throps. Mm -hmm. Give them the real ones to their psychic tests and he can potentially heal them. Yep. Simple there. Two, he is a durable support character. He sits in your gun line and grants things like Symbiostorm to him. Yep. <clears throat> or he can support um, assault forces before they launch into the enemy lines by guaranteeing, if you put the relic on him, you can guarantee Onslaught pretty much and you can pretty much guarantee Catalyst. Yeah, it's he's almost an auto-include in most lists mm -hmm. just because he does so much for his points value. I, I yeah. would go to say taking two of them yeah. is good. The only downside to taking two of them is now the psychic um, heavy secondaries for like, you know, killing psychic Ooh, characters yeah. or killing characters, they start to stack up because now it's yeah. you know, six points for killing the two of them. Didn't they get changed a little bit though, those ones? Uh, they, Is that something else? They did get changed, but only psychic units got changed. So psychic units only worth two, and the characters oh. are still worth three. Oh, I see. Yeah, so in my tournament list, which you guys might see later this week mm. or next week, mm. is now has two Neurothropes and Swarmy and Zonethropes. So you're going for it. I'm going for it. Wow. So if they kill them all, yeah. then that's a lot of points for them. However, the value. The, the Neurothrope, when I played, the Neurothrope never died. Yeah. He, they're never dead because they're sitting in the back. No one's going after they're, them. They're not a first or second priority target. Swarmy, he'll die. The Zonethropes, they'll probably die. Yeah. But the two Neurothropes, they, they stay back there. People think they're easy to kill, 
and he just sits there with a three up invuln save, tanking yep. Smash Captain hammers all yep. day long. Yeah. yeah, if you make if you make your threes, you make your threes. That is stay alive. That's a tactic I don't have on here, but use your neuro throw up like a roadblock if you have to against certain characters. Especially if you have two. Especially if you have two. Throw one of them out there. Let yeah. Them take some hits. It I, if it push don't purposely charge him out there. Yeah. But if it's the di difference between him going after your zone, your neuro throw and him going after tying up your hive guard or an yeah. exocrine or something. Sacrifice the Neurothrope and hope you roll hot on your three up invones. Because if you do, your he might be impossible. He'll, he'll yeah. hate you. Yeah. Your opponent will hate you. Or it's she. really frustrating. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Yeah. So this is the Neurothropes. Sit great forward. Now, for the Zone Thropes, I have two main builds on here, but I put a third one in just for fun. Mm. Uh, the first one, my favorite, are Mortal Wound Bombs. That is taking five or six Zone Thropes, depending on your risk tolerance. True. Um, you can do Smite and Psychic Scream. On average, if you get your test off, that's seven mortal wounds to a maximum of 12. 12 mortal wounds Pretty in one second Pretty dang phase. good. Maximum. Yeah. Again, you got to roll perfect on yeah. that. But still. It's possible. Seven mortal wounds. That's two dead blade guard, two yeah. dead gravis. Two dead blade guard are a lot more than you can do with most of your armies yeah. and Tyranids. True. Uh, and they, again, they are very tarp Mm-hmm. So I love them that way. They're expensive. They're 300 points for a unit of six. Yeah. But they, they demand the firepower to go into them. And they if they do. don't, if they don't take the firepower, then they're going to be just dealing mortal wounds all day long. Hmm. And if they do demand the firepower and you're rolling hot, then you're, you know, those eight multi melter shots might only kill one or two of them. Exactly. It might... Again, if you are feeling good about your threes, if you're hitting your three up saves, go for some stuff. Yeah. Them. Go for some plays. I like it. Uh, the kind of opposite type of build from that is the support build. Mm -hmm. Usually you just take them in squads of three. They're great for supporting, giving out synapse, dealing some mortal wounds here and there, throwing out the psychic powers we already discussed. Uh, they do both. They do both. Yeah. yeah. They're not. It's a very simple, simple way to run them, but it's pretty effective for what they do. Yeah, and then you're not looking for them to be the anchor no. of your army. They're yeah. just there to help support Synapse. They're exactly. durable, yeah, like you said. Now this one, <laughs> so I, I didn't really realize this was possible. So this is what I, how I like to pull off if I use the Mortal Wound Bomb, the strategy yeah. and the Psychic Barrage. Yeah. So in a Tyranocyte, you can put three groups of three Zonthropes and a Neurothrope if you really want to. Because that's 10 models. That's 10 models. Of infantry. And I think technically you can do 20 models of infantry in a pod. 20 models of infantry or one monster. Wait, so you could theoretically do... Two sets of those. 18 zone throws and whole two Neurothropes? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's really Tyranids, interesting. Because we only have one transport. Well, yeah, we, that's Technically so weird. we kind of have three, but we have one transport. say one, yeah. Um, they don't have, okay, if the model is like this many wounds, it takes up this many slots. It's also it's Tyranids just, have all of the scale. variety just, of wounds. Are you an infantry? Are you a monster? <laughs> now you do <laughs> have crazy. to go with the, can you fit them around the pod? So 10 at most probably. 10 is probably the best you can do. Otherwise, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can't fit 20. No. Cameron. So you have your, your pod. It's got three groups of three Zoanthropes in it. Each one is 150 points. The pod is like 75 points. Wow. If you really want to put the Neurothrope in there, that's even more points. Wow. Plop it down. Wait until turn two or three when your opponent has got a key point that you want to nuke. And a bunch of stuff there. A bunch of stuff. And then boom. And it, then, might do, it might do something. And then for might one not. turn, you get one big shot. And then as soon as one of them dies... You, it's, just it it's just a bunch of zone throws. It's just a bunch of zone throws, which is still scary. <laughs> but it's still I mean, a bunch of mortal wounds. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, no. It's strange. It's fun. It's fun, not competitive. It's, this is a, again, if you've been playing since 5th edition, this is a little a nod back to the way you played zone throws in 5th yeah. and 6th edition. Just shooting lances is, across the floor. Is, yeah, yeah, shooting lances Blast. and deep striking them in with the pods. Yeah. Especially the Doom, again, yeah. if you want to hear about the Doom, let us know. I'd be happy to tell stories of the Doom. Maybe it might be your favorite 40k story that has ever happened to you. I love the yeah. Doom. Yeah. He is... That's for a different day, though. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love him more than anything else in the Doom. Yeah. 
So conclusion here, neurothropes get an A. It should be an it would be an A plus if they had access to a third power. Mm. When you use resonance barb, the fact that they can't use a third power without spending two command points yeah. is annoying. That's the only reason they're not an A plus. Otherwise, A. Very solid. For me. Durable solid. synapse, key powers that they can just whip out and don't even have to think twice about them normally. Yeah. And they can boost your zone throbs. Yeah. Zone throbs, I give them a B plus. Mm. It's probably a little higher than a lot of people. Some other people would say. I think so. I'm a fan of that big unit. I... I know there are a lot of ways psychic powers are starting to pop up. Sisters now, every unit can deny psychic powers. They do only get one die, oh. and if they roll a six, it automatically denies it. Huh. So sisters now have a one in six chance to deny all of your powers. Wow. Which is That's annoying. Interesting, yeah. It will mean that a K in the course of a game, they will probably deny one or two of your powers, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's, I would guess when whenever this codex comes out, though, they they might include something to assist the zonthropes in. Maybe it'd be cool to see what they do to zonthropes. Yeah, like we'll to, see though. I'd like to see a little bit of change, not too much, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, they great counter to space marines because space marines have a lot of high wound, high invuln save, high toughness stuff. Yeah. And zonthropes don't care about that. Nope. They um, pretty much bypass it. Yeah, they're a decent counter to admech. Because they are tanky for their big guns, mm. now granted, 3-up save only goes so far when your opponent is dumping 40 wounds at you with, you know, strength 3 guns. Right. But uh, they can be a great counter to take out some of those more elite targets. Definitely. If your opponent's using them. Mm -hmm. Drukari, you, oh. your opponents don't He's have a lot to deal with Drukari. I think they might have, like, one relic or a stratagem that can maybe deny a power. Mm. But other than that, it's a lot of little shots. Which Same with Necrons, too. Necrons, too. Yeah. You know, there's really there's a couple odd odd items, odd characters, but otherwise you just you just do your psychic you just powers. Do your thing. Yeah. yeah. And the Drukari right now, they're spamming Dark Lances, mm. which if you're rolling hot on the dice, yeah. they're just going to bounce off. And These if could be the perfect defense. If they're bouncing off your zone tropes that are not hitting your big bugs. So, yeah, yeah, true. I think they have a decent play there. Mm hmm. Uh, they are again, they're expensive and you've got to make sure you use them for more than just smite Make sure to pick the right powers for your list. Yep Get on objectives to use them as a tar pit against certain key units if it comes to you know The course of the game is like all right It's either I tar pit these guys or they sweep over my flank and kill them. Yeah. Use them in that way. It seems counterintuitive a little bit, but use them as a, almost a tar pit combat threat. Yeah, Use them for objectives when you need them. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, if your opponent has objectives secured, what can you do about it? Yeah. But they are great for sitting on a middle or a flank objective to just do the business and for sit sure. there and hold it. Mm -hmm. So to wrap it up, Zonthropes and Neurothropes are great. I, Neurothropes are obviously an A unit. The Zonthropes, I think they're a pretty good unit, but I understand people's wary of the big blocks. There's some debates about that for sure yeah you but know. that's it if you guys like this video and you like the style of video please like and subscribe for more content like this comment down below what other units you want us to cover we're getting towards that ninth edition codex closer, we should be closer. if you saw that video i just posted that uh will kind of hint towards when it's coming out we don't have too much time then to cover all the dash sheets, so let us know which ones you want to make sure we cover for the last little bit before we dump into 9th edition. Doom of Malentai. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Ask about just, it. Just ask about it. We'll do a story on the Doom of Malentai. It'll yeah. be like a, a horror, a horror story. I was going to say, story. we could do a little narrative. We do a narrative too. horror story about the Doom of Malentai because that's pretty much what he was. Yeah, true. We'll show it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.